Why art? Because damaged people need a dimension of their own to live and think and breathe and express their autonomy. Because damaged people and damaging people haven't been able to kick the predation monkey yet. Because the reptilian fight or flight strain is hopelessly jammed into the genes of the too clever monkey predator. Because we all fear the invisible talon from above that could be coming for any one of us at any time. Because we are supposed to be scavengers and gatherers, not predators. Because we are actually not predators, we are in fact prey. Because when the invisible talon hooks our heads in its grip, it is no longer invisible. Because any one of us can become food and or fodder, exactly, usually at the exact moment, we finally believed that we couldn't. Because the worst predators are the ones who look just like us. Sociopaths who greet us with handshakes and hugs. Because our beloved, nurturing Mother Earth gives not one flying fuck which of these you are when the cycle of life decides to have one of its micro, macro, cosmic days of days. Because civilization is a delusion drawn onto a tarp, onto a fence, pinned to a shack. Because this rant isn't about civilization. Because this rant isn't about Mother Earth. Because this rant isn't about food or fodder, predators or prey, gatherers or scavengers. Because this poem is really about my daughter's sweet, adorable bunny, ironically named Bambi and not Thumper, <laughs> who was murdered in our backyard by a desperate, hungry prairie falcon. Because the desperate, hungry prairie falcon was driven into the city to search for food because of the drought that is smothering California. Because the drought that is smothering California is being brought on by accelerated global climate change. Because accelerated global climate change is being per per perpetrated primarily by the petroleum products industry. Because fuck you, Chevron, Exxon, and British Petroleum. Because fuck you, General Dynamics. Because fuck you, American Petroleum Inst Institute. Because fuck you, Carlyle Group. Because of your crimes against Alaska, and the Gulf, and Canada, and Africa, and the Crescent, and Southeast Asia, you can now add the murder of my daughter's sweet, adorable bunny, ironically named Bambi and not Thumper, to your list of atrocities. Because of you, I am a murdered, murdered bunny now, too. Because maybe some of this sounds funny, but this bunny ain't laughing. And that is why art. Because you murder bunnies. Collateral damage. The Vietnam War didn't end with the fall of Saigon. It continued here in San Francisco, in a motel on a hill overlooking the highway. You know the one. It started with the opening of champagne, the wire slicing his hand, instantly cutting through to Vietnam, pell-mell flight, whoosh, in a rush of flashbacks. Eight frenzy hours, panicked, running for his life around the room, frantically waving his bleeding hand, rushing on the bed, zipping off the bed, a blind race across the top of the bed, blood spurting all over the bed, the walls, the furniture, the ceiling. Our room is a crime scene totaling hundreds of dollars in damage. Eight punishing hours with the ghosts of Vietnam, his side of the conversation, a replay of VCs hanging from the trees, sliced open, entrails on the ground falling, falling, falling. And I'm feeling like a prisoner. Eight hours of throat slashing, knife slicing, entrails spilling, the whoop, whoop, whoop of helicopters chopping the smoke-filled skies, thrashing sounds coming from the tall grass, his outbursts, ra outbursts raining bombs on my head. Shh! They're there. Listen. Listen. Ooh! They just sliced them open like that. 
No, 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 Sergeant, Doctor, Boxy, Boxy, schizophrenic, schizophrenic. There can't be any peace tonight with him darting across the bed in zigzag explosions, crimson emotion splattering walls in red. It's 1968. Charlie Company's in our room. I'm witnessing another holocaust. Milai is right here in San Francisco, room 208. The jungle is alive to the smallest detail. Even I could see it. Sounds so ripe, I can hear what they're saying. I can smell the boots with jungle rot and the blood-soaked mud. So I sit and wait and wait. The hours I wait with shadows hanging over me, fraught with questions, rehearsing scenarios in my head. How to get out of this room alive. How to get him home by morning. Are the cameras on the ground to record us? With cops. How much do I have to witness before I call an ambulance? I know the stories of wives beaten while still sleeping. I've come to learn that there are worse things than dying. I'm trapped in one intense radio drama till he passes out from exhaustion and I surrender to the silence for some relief. Seems we'll never leave this Ponji trap motel. I hunker down and grab his hand for connection, hoping he'll come back. He wakes in the morning totally blind to the carnage he created in our room. Blood is everywhere. And he wants to play bartender with mimosas for breakfast. He's rested and I'm feeling Picasso on the floor in a rubble of grief, and I'm thinking, some more than man you are. He's one greasy Joe Cool, still wanting to make love. His every kiss with such deliberate precision, silent, deep, with meaning. He's happy and celebrates with another bottle of champagne and orange juice, but this time, I open the bottle. What a feast, he declares. Wish we could stay all day. The phone rings, interrupting this newly found harmony. The front desk saying our cab has arrived. We head for the door. Feeling tired and tense, I guiltily whisper close to his ear, hey, no tip for the housekeeper, you know, for the trouble, don't you think? Trouble, what trouble, he happily interrupts. Tossing the key on the bed, locking the scandal behind us, we stroll hand in hand to the taxi, escape the bill for the damage, evac to the real world. Dropping me back off in home, home in Noe Valley, he sings for my attention from the open cab window before waving goodbye. Thank you, honey, for the nice time. I turn just in time to see him hanging out of the window so I catch his wave and flash the biggest, most encouraging smile in return. He's all sunshine and light and I'm left at the bottom of the stairs trying to collect my thoughts. Seems I'm the burnout, only 24 and feeling a lousy 85. Now I'm left spiritually battered, unraveled, turned to ash, forced to retreat and fall into bed, hoping not to have dreams of massacres and devastation, napalm children and burning monks, Eli and body camps, and oh, so grateful they didn't see my ID.